Hi everybody, today we're talking about sets. These are a kind of data structure in Python that consists of unique items. And unique items means that you cannot have two similar items in your set. For example, you can't have two Bobs or two Sarahs, for example. And we are using these because it's a very nice way to store only the unique values of a list. And if you're doing some kind of lookup, then sets are so much faster than lists because the lookup is done by a hash table. And this hash table, it really gives you the address of every single um, element in the set. So when you do a lookup, you immediately in one step only get uh, the whether or not the element is a set or uh, is an element in the set or not. So this is called a one complexity because you only need one step. Whereas if you search through a list, then you have to search one by one. And in the worst case, you have to search through all n uh, elements in the list to find whether or not something is a member of the list. So that's O n complexity. So searching or testing whether or not something is in the set or not is so much faster with sets. So for example, if you have a lot of users and you would like to give a new user um, a response given uh, the new user's username, a lot of user, uh, then uh, the user or the new user would get the uh, the answer much faster if you use a set versus a list. So sets are created by enclosing a sequence of values inside these square brackets. That would be squiggly brackets actually, not square brackets. So, um, and if you have your sequence inside this pair of square brackets, squiggly brackets, then you make a set. So for example, we are making set one here and we're making it with squiggly brackets and four pieces of strings. And we would like to check how many um, elements this set would have. And we use the len function to get the length of the set. It just gives us the number of elements in the set. And of course, we would check whether or not uh, this set is of a type set. So control enter to run this code. And indeed, we have the length of the set is four and the type of our variable set one is set. Up here, we defined our set and the sets elements by including this, um, these elements as strings, but we could uh, pass in a set or a list into our set function. So we can define our set two by the set function. And we could pass in a list of values. And if we had done this, we would um, define set two as an empty set. But we want some elements 
in our set. So we define our set by passing in this list of elements. And we are going to look how many elements we actually have in our set. And we're going to look at the type. And we see here that uh, the type is actually a set and we have four elements in our set. Our set function is kind of quirky because if you define a set with a set function and just pass in one string, then the set function will split the string into its components. So in this set, you have one, two, three, four. <clears throat> Sorry for the voice crack. You have one, two, three, four elements because Apple contains four unique characters. And just uh, remember here that the set is not counting the P twice, you only get one P. So you only get unique values in your set. But if you do not want your uh, set function to split your string, then you should enclose your string with some square brackets like this. Another difference uh, from lists is that the values in a set are not necessarily stored in the same order that they were passed. So for example, we're redefining set one here and we have banana, apple, pear and peach, but then we are going to print set one. So control enter to print and we see that the um, the elements in the set, they are stored in the memory uh, uh, by, by Python in a different order than what we passed in. So if we try to access an item using the index, in this case, trying to get the first element in a set, then we cannot do that. So in order to find an item in a set, we must either um, just use the membership operator in, for example, apple in set one, and we should find apple because we have defined apple as an element in set one. So this should return true or we can print all of the items in the set with a for loop. In this case, for item in set one, print item. And for each iteration of this for loop, one element from set one will be passed into and stored in item, uh, item uh, variable and we would print the content of the item variable. So in this case, apple, peach, banana, and pear, sequentially. We have seen that the order of, um, of a set cannot be accessed by an index uh, function. So this differs between lists and sets. So if we try to define two sets here with the numbers one, two, three, and four, but in different order, then we can try to check whether or not these two lists are identical. And they are not identical because with lists, order matters. But if we test whether or not two sets are equal, then we can define our sets in a similar manner 
only using the curly brackets here. And they contain one, two, three, and four, but in different order. But with sets, the order does not matter. Only the elements themselves matter, whether or not the element is in the set or not. So set one strictly equal to set two is actually true. And we do have some uh, common set of op operations here. We just define our set one as banana, apple, pear, and peach. And to add an item or an element to a set, we can just use the dot add function um, the add function of the set class. So in this case, the add function takes in a string and we can try to um, try to print whatever is in set one. And we see that apple, banana, peer, um, peach and pear has been uh, being joined by pineapple. But if we try to add pineapple again, we do not get two pineapples because we only store unique values in our sets. But we can remove um, uh, elements from a set using the remove function like this and we see that we only have apple banana pe uh, peach and pear we do not have pineapple or we could use the discard function and discard apple as well so here we are only left with banana peach and pear but uh, if you try to remove with the remove function something which is not an element in the list, then you would get an error. In this case, it's better to use the discard function because even if apple is not in set one right now, we are trying to discard apple but it's not in the set anyways, but we do not throw an error message. So now we have only banana pear and peach. peach. The set variable actually follows the same operations as in mathematics. So for example, we can define uh, some, uh, some sets here we have the Canadian like flag, it's red and white. So in the Canadian set, we have red and white as strings. We have a set which we, uh, which we call British and it contains red, blue and white. And we have a set called Italian. It's, uh, it, it contains the elements red, white and green. And as we have seen previously, two sets are equal if and only if they contain the exact same values. So for example, uh, the Canadian set and British set, they are equal apart from blue. So British contains one extra element which is blue. So if we run this test, Canadian strictly equal to British, then we get false. But we can also run the opposite test, the Canadian strictly not equal to British, which is true because British contains one extra element. And we can also try to get the whether or not um, a set is a subset of another set 
if a set is a subset, then the set contains um, elements which can be found in the uh, the other set, the parent set. So we are going to check whether or not the Canadian set is a subset of the British. So if we run this um, this code, Canadian dot is subset and British, then we get true because all the elements in the Canadian set, red and white, can be found in the British set, red and white. We can also try to check whether or not the Italian set is a subset of the British set. But in this case, um, it's false because the Italian set contains one element, which is green, and green cannot be found in Br the British set. So Italian is not a subset of British set. And we also have the union function, which returns the set containing all of the values in two sets. And for example, if we uh, run this um, uh, function, the union function or the British set, and we want to get the union between the British set and the Italian set, then we get all the elements which are either in the British set or the Italian set or both of the sets. So that would be the union. But the intersection would be uh, the set containing uh, the elements which are only in both of these sets. So the intersection of the British and Italian sets would be the elements that uh, is present in the British set and the Italian set at the same time. So Italian, the Italian set contains also green, but the British set does not, so it's not in the intersection. And the British set contains blue as well as red and white, but it, the Italian set does not. So uh, the blue is not in the intersection. In addition, we have the difference between two sets. And the difference can be thought of as a minus sign. So we have the difference between the British set and the Italian set which is blue because you um, you take the elements in the British set which is red white and blue and subtract the elements which can be found in the Italian set which is red white and green and red and white is then subtracted from the British set and you are left with a set of only one element, which is blue. And you can run this function on the Italian set variable um, and all the elements which are found in the British set would then be subtracted from the Italian set and you're left with only green because the red and the white can be found in the British set so they are sub subtracted from the Italian set.